Uh, good morning. It's uh, with great sadness that I'm here to report that yesterday at approximately 10.31 a.m., the Erie County Sheriff's deputies responded to a 911 call and that we're investig investigating a tragedy that occurred at two houses in the town of Clarence in an outdoor shooting range in the town of Newstead. Deceased are 37-year-old Mary Beth Burgum, 64-year-old Nancy Burgum, 66-year-old Mark Burgum, and 43-year-old Eric Burgum. All four suffered fatal gunshot wounds, and Eric Burgum expired as a result of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The outdoor range is located at 8081 Green, Green Bush Road in the town of Newstead, and that's where both male victims, a father and a son, were found deceased. During this scene investigation, detectives uncovered evidence that led them to determine that Eric Burgum fatally shot his father, Mark, and then took his own life. Unfortunately, the investigation also led to the discovery of two female victims that were fatally shot. All four are related. Mary Beth Burgum was the wife of Eric Burgum, and Nancy Burgum was the wife of Mark Burgum and the mother of Eric. The investigation is ongoing, but we believe the following chronology played out. And this belief stems from a note that was recovered from Eric Burgum's vehicle, which was located at the shooting range. The note, while difficult to uh, decipher, lays out an apparent schedule. Based upon our interpretation of this note, which is barely legible, right, and other evidence that was collected, detectives believe that Eric Burgum murdered his wife, then his mother, then his father, and ultimately turned the gun on, onto him, himself. Four children and other family members are left behind, and it is my understanding that many resources in the form of grief counseling and other forms of assistance are being provided to the surviving family members. Again, this is an ongoing investigation. Uh, the Erie County Sheriff's Office uh, just wants to let the family know that our thoughts and prayers are with all the victims, the families, and I hope that the uh, community rallies around these four children that are left behind and that we're able to take care of them, not only in the next couple of days, but throughout their, uh, their lives. So God bless the Burgum family. Um, we notified uh, some of the family members that we were able to reach uh, the, the wife, um, Mary Beth, uh, her family's from the Baltimore area. Her father uh, is headed this way. Her mother had passed away years ago. So um, we've made notifications. And again, this is an ongoing investigation. And I'm very proud to always work with our great Erie County uh, District Attorney, the Honorable uh, Mr. John Flynn. And I'll, I'll give him the uh, podium. Thank you, Sheriff. And I can tell you that Yesterday's uh, investigation went uh, so professionally, what was so professionally done, you know, due to the fact when you have the sheriff of Erie County as a former homicide detective of the Buffalo Police Department, and you have the second in command, the under sheriff of Erie County, is recently a former homicide detective with the Buffalo Police Department. When you have two former homicide detectives from the city of Buffalo as Erie County's uh, uh, two top men who are in charge of the Sheriff's Department, then you get a professional uh, investigation and you get uh, basically the, the residents of Erie County are, are getting their money's worth with both of these two individuals and the entire Erie County Sheriff's Department in what they did yesterday when <clears throat> There, there was also um, a, uh, a third individual who became a witness who was at the gun range. Uh, this individual um, is the one who called 911. Uh, 
when 911 was called, uh, the sheriff's department immediately got to the uh, gun range uh, uh, almost, almost immediately. Uh, they were able to ascertain rather quickly that uh, there were children uh, of the deceased uh, Eric Burgum uh, who were all in school at the time. As the sheriff said, uh, there are four children here who are, who are uh, left behind. Uh, the sheriff's department uh, also ascertained that uh, there was a, obviously a mother of the children and, and a wife of the deceased uh, and a wife of the deceased father uh, who was unfortunately shot right next and lying right next to uh, Eric at the gun range. The, Sheriff's Department immediately went and did a welfare check uh, on, they sent out two teams, uh, one to the uh, uh, wife's house uh, of, of the uh, shooter and the other to his mother's house. Uh, and those two teams were able to find, unfortunately, uh, both victims uh, uh, dead uh, in the house. The, the children, um, I have two victim advocates uh, from my office uh, that are working with the school uh, counselors um, from the Clarence School District uh, in, in, you know, helping the children out. Uh, right now, the children are staying at a, at, a, at a friend's house right now, but as the sheriff mentioned, without a lot of family in the area here, um, you know, my, my concern is, you know, what's going to happen to these four children now um, going forward. So, uh, obviously, uh, my thought and prayers, uh, thoughts and prayers are, are with uh, the children, uh, the entire extended family here, uh, and <clears throat> the uh, community of, uh, of Clarence and, and Newstead uh, where these uh, uh, horrific uh, acts uh, occurred yesterday. And again, I just can't uh, thank the Erie County Sheriff's Department enough um, for what they did. Um, they immediately called. Um, my deputy DA Mike Kane and my head of homicide Gary Hackbush, who are here uh, today, and um, uh, uh, Mike, Gary, and uh, Under Sheriff Cooley um, were uh, uh, spearheading this uh, the uh, boots on the ground investigation yesterday, which again uh, ultimately is not going to appears right now lead to a prosecution because uh, the perpetrator um, is um, took his own life. <clears throat> Uh, as the sheriff said, though, this is matter is still under investigation. Uh, we are trying to ascertain a motive. That's your first question. What's the motive here? Why? Why did this happen? Um, we are still trying to figure that out. <clears throat> we are still trying to figure out why someone would kill his wife, his mother, and father. Uh, and um, we are so this, you know, the investigation remains open from that end, um, trying to just you know find a motive here, just to you know, have some closure to this thing if we, if we can. Um, as the sheriff mentioned, we have one note. The, the, the note that was found in his car um, <clears throat> doesn't give us a motive at all. It just gives a, a timeline. Uh, it's just a timeline of, of the morning that specifically lays out uh, his actions yesterday morning. Um, and, it, you know, um, makes reference to the acts that he did. I'm not going to specifically tell you what it says, but it makes reference to the acts that were perpetrated. Uh, but again, there's no, there's no, no motive in that at all. So um, for, for closure purposes, we all want to know why, and the community wants to know why. Why, why does someone kill their wife and their parents? Um, and so we are still actually looking at that. Questions? Are, 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 you, are, you, are you receiving corroboration from family and friends? Well, there's really, not, there's, there's really not much family here. I mean, uh, um, what, like, like the sheriff mentioned, um, the, um, the, there's really not much family in town. Um, you know, uh, but, but as, and as far as people rallying, yes. People are, I mean, the entire community is rallying, not only behind the kids, but behind the investigation. So yes, we have no, no, no one is obviously, you know, thwarting any investigation at all. Early, early, early reports had the father and son traveling to the 10X 
Chinese club together. No. Is, is that correct? No. Okay. No, it's not correct. The father got there first. The father got there first um, and was, uh, was engaged in, in, in shooting first. Um, the, 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 the second gentleman who was there, uh, the witness, uh, was there. And you know, the father said, hey, my son's coming at some point. And so when, 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 when the witness uh, heard that, he then moved down to make room for the son. And then the son came. And the son actually um, started shooting at the range first. And then after shooting at the range, uh, then went ahead and, 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 and killed his father. Unaware of what his son had just did. There, there's no indication that the father was aware of what the son just did. Absolutely none. Did, the, did Eric and his wife, were they together? Were they estranged? They were living together. They, they, were, they were living together. Um, uh, you know, I, 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 I hate to talk about someone's family relationship when they're both deceased. So, you know, I'm not going to get into that, really. But they, they, they were living together. I know there's no motive at this time, but do you guys have any reason to believe that he had planned this, or was it a very last minute thing? Um, well, I, I don't, we don't know how far in advance it was planned. Based upon the note that we found, it was at a minimum potentially planned yesterday morning. But whether or not you know, he had thought about it for two weeks, you know, a month, that, that we don't know. But the note, the note appears to have been written all one time. The same color ink is used on the note. The, it, it's lined up kind of perfectly on, on a small sheet of paper, you know, which you know, if someone's, you know, writes a note and then comes back a half an hour later and writes another note, it's not like lined up perfectly. So, you know, again, do I definitively know that? No, but just our, logical, our logic here is that the note was written all one time. And if that's the case, then it was written before any of this happened. Was Eric taking any forms of medication? You know, I don't know, but if I did know, I wouldn't answer anything, I would tell you the truth. Did Eric Bergman have a history with law enforcement? Yes, he had a prior 2011 um, insurance fraud um, uh, conviction. Uh, he was convicted of a misdemeanor insurance fraud back in 2011. He was, a, um, <clears throat> he was in the home theater business. That was his line of work. Um, he had, a, had his own business with a partner. Um, again, the sheriff's department, uh, thinking quickly, um, you know, located, you know, uh, reached out to his partner to make sure his partner was okay. And his partner's okay, thank God. Um, but they, you know, again, the professionals standing next to me here thought of that immediately and went out and did a welfare check on him as well. And uh, so we had a business partner, and they had a home theater business, uh, you know, kind of a, you know, did, did some camera business, you know, home security stuff. And uh, back in 2011, he had an insurance fraud claim kind of related to his business that he was uh, uh, pled guilty to a misdemeanor and got three years probation. Have you ever seen a murder-suicide where the person goes to three different locations? Usually that's a crime of passion, not a plan. Now, it's almost like he scheduled his father to be where he was, but there was three different spots he Correct. hit. I have never seen that. The, the sheriff has way more experience in, in, in this than I do, but I, I have never seen that. And I'm, I'm going to agree here with the uh, district attorney in, in, in my career and uh, under Sheriff uh, William Cooley's career. Uh, you're correct. It's a crime of passion, and for that to be planned out, uh, we're thinking that morning, and for him to actually shoot at the shooting range with his rifle and have a great grouping from 100 yards um, lacks that passion, right? And uh, it was so calculating and, and uh, gives you uh, just chills, you know. So um, at the end of the day, three people are uh, victims of murder and, uh, and one person takes his life and four kids are left behind. Uh, what I w do want to say is from the moment it happened, um, Under Sheriff uh, Bill Cooley and Chief uh, Timothy uh, Kearney and Chief Brian Bertzolero and Captain uh, Welch, three crime scenes, boots on the ground, everybody uh, working together, planning to see if there's any other victims. And 
every time I received a call, it was just gut-wrenching when the mother was found dead, when, when, when the wife was found dead. And, um, you know, thank God the kids were in school. Thank God the business partner's fine. And, um, but it, it was just a very tragic family event that occurred in Clarence in the town of Newstead. And, you know, our thoughts and prayers beyond the family go out to the community. And um, I spoke to the superintendent of Clarence Schools. Uh, he's on top of it, as, as you heard from uh, our district attorney. Uh, there's advocates there, and we're trying to do as much as possible to uh, uh, not only um, follow up on this investigation, but support the family in any way possible. So when the father arrives, of um, Mary Beth's father arrives, uh, Mr. O'Bannon, then we will um, assist in any way possible. What weapon was used and was uh, Eric the registered owner of the weapon? He, he, he did have a pistol permit and um, we're, uh, we're trying to determine if the same weapon was used in, in the three shootings, so that's still ongoing. As far as the locations go, did he start at Ransom Road and then go to Shimmerville or was it vice versa? So their, their, their family residence is on um, Shimmersville. Schisler. Schisler, I'm sorry, Schisler. And then uh, their parents' uh, resident is on uh, Ransom. Shimersville, sorry. Oh, Shimersville, okay. So a combination between, yeah. <laughs> Shimersville and, um, and then from Shimersville, he went to Ransom. And from Ransom, he went out to uh, the town of Newstead. So again, you know, the question, uh, this gentleman asked about the murder-suicide being a crime of passion. It was very calculated. There's a, there's a note that's written and with a timeline and um, uh, just uh, very, very disturbing. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a